friends, I've got some very bad news to tell you about. Out of the Court of Appeal here in Alberta, a three-judge panel has ruled against Rebel News. But our fight for journalistic freedom and free expression and due process is not even close to over. In fact, we're going to step it up a notch. But we need your help to do this because while this fight today is about us, eventually it will be about you too. Sheila Gunn Reed for Rebel News, and I'm very sorry to have to report to you that a three judge panel has upheld a lower provincial court decision, a judicial review, that upheld a reprimand issued against us at Rebel News for putting up a billboard way back in late 2018. Now, for those of you who have not been following this story closely, it's wild. It's a story of government overreach, political censorship and a complete and total lack of due process. It's been a fight for editorial freedom and fair treatment under the law, while an out-of-control elections bureaucrat used elections finance laws to try to censor journalists for being vocal critics of the government of the day. Now, like I said, the story, it goes back a couple of years. It's two years and then some in the making. I'll give you a short version, but you can see all of our reporting, our legal filings, and our communications, and you can also support our legal fight at rebeltrial.com. It's all there for you to see. And the whole thing started way back in late November 2018 when we put up a billboard calling on then-Premier Rachel Notley to fire her own education minister, David Egan, because Egan had failed Alberta students. 40% of grade 9 kids were failing in math. Now, in mid-December of the same year, we received a letter from the elections commissioner in Alberta, who, like Rachel Notley, was subsequently fired by the United Conservative Party. That letter said we were being investigated because our billboard allegedly broke elections finance laws and that we should have registered as a third party political advertiser before putting it up. We were not in an election and we are not advertisers. We are journalists expressing our opinions the same way you might see on any given day on the editorial pages of a failing newspaper. We just express our editorial opinions in a more interesting and compelling way. So we lawyered up and sent a letter back. January 9th, our lawyers told the elections cops it was our intention to fight back and we would be presenting evidence. Just five days later, on January 14th, we received yet another letter, a notice of adverse finding a conviction from the elections commissioner telling us they had already convicted us and that they wanted to talk to us about the size of the fines they were going to issue us. That was the only conversation they wanted to have. No trial, no evidence. And unlike a real court, the elections commissioner plays every role in the quasi-judicial theater of elections crimes. He's the cop, he's the judge, he's the jury, and he's the executioner. The whole thing is insane. It's our right as journalists to be critical of the government without having to register our objections with the government as a third party advertiser. And we absolutely have a right to defend ourselves against any allegations that we broke the law in a real court, not some quasi kangaroo charade where one guy who doesn't like you for political reasons accuses you of wrongdoing and then also appoints himself the decider of the case too. So we growled back at the government and they backed down, but only sort of. They told us we wouldn't be getting any fines for our wrongdoing, we'd be getting a reprimand. But for what? We don't take reprimands from elections cops for speaking our minds. Even witches were able to face their accusers at a show trial. We, at Rebel News, <laughs> we didn't even get that much. So we said, take your reprimand and stuff it. We're taking this to a judicial review. And I know that sounds a little crazy to take a non-monetary reprimand to a judicial review. I mean, who does that? Well, we do. Because we do not concede that the government has the ability to scold journalists for how we express our opinions about the government and when we express them. It's the principle of it all, and it's worth fighting for. We wanted a real judge to look at our treatment and the facts in the context of the timeline in which they occurred, those few days in January. Unfortunately, that provincial court judge sided with the government. 
So we appealed that review and the decision in that came down last Friday morning and it wasn't good. Let's read directly from the decision. The three judges wrote, we agree that some aspects of the notice could and probably should have been phrased differently, that it would have been preferable not to have entitled the notice as notice of adverse findings and proposed penalty or to have raised the nature of the administrative penalty being considered until a final determination had been made regarding the contravention of the act. However, we are satisfied that the notice was sent in the course of the investigative phase of the commissioner's inquiry that the closed mind test was the applicable test and that the test was correctly applied by the judicial review judge. So that's the bad news. They've sided with the lower court. But here's the optimistic news. We're seeking leave to appeal all the way to the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land. As in, we are asking the Supreme Court of Canada to hear our appeal. But it is up to their discretion as to whether or not they will hear our case. But that paragraph from the decision that I read to you, that's the Court of Appeal signaling to the elections cops, Elections Alberta, that they were not on their best behavior, doing their best work. And those judges wrote it directly into their decision, and that means something. Now, the reason I say this isn't just about us and that it's about all of you, it's clear. We can put up a fight here at Rebel News and a fuss when the government tells us to shut up, and we definitely won't shut up. But what if they do this to you? What if you take out a billboard critical of Jason Kenney's lockdown on your business? What if you want to show the world on a billboard how the state arrested and ultimately incarcerated your pastor for weeks? Should you have to register your opinions about the government with the government, with the elections cops? And should you face a reprimand or steep fines if you don't? Or is this still a free country where free citizens can have their political opinions as they see fit? Are we able to give our politicians hell when they deserve it? Or even when they don't? Should the elections cops be pseudo-censorship police? And should they allow you the chance to answer to the crimes they accuse you of? This is Canada, not China. We have due process, and we have free speech, and we have the presumption of innocence. And I think the elections bureaucrats have to be put in their place now. Before the next election, before the third party advertiser rules are used to silence any other citizen or journalist who is not advocating for a party, but is instead criticizing a party, which is what we did. Now, friends, as you know, our lawyers are great. They're the best in the business. They fought so hard and so smart, and they will fight again. But they are up against the full force of the government, a government that threw everything they had at us. They spared no cost. And why would they bother to watch their pennies anyway? They have all of your money to go around fighting citizens and censoring journalists. We rely on people like you who care about free speech, freedom, and due process. Can you help us one more time to take this fight as far as we must? Because I think we absolutely have to. I think free speech depends on it. If you can, please donate at rebeltrial.com to offset our legal fees. You can see all of the hard work our lawyers have done to make the case this far. You can see how the elections cops decided we were guilty before we even had a chance to participate in the investigation. You can see the only thing that they ever wanted to discuss with us was how much they wanted to fine us in the end. How very kind and fair of them. Like I said, we aren't even close to being done fighting, but we need your help to do it. If you can, please visit rebeltrial.com and make a donation today. Thank you very much. Free speech is so important for all of us. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Well, there you have it. The Alberta Court of Appeal has sided with a judicial review that upheld a reprimand against Rebel News for not registering our 
opinions in opposition to the government with the government before we express them. We're never doing that. We're taking this fight all the way to the Supreme Court. If you'd like to pitch in to help cover our legal costs and see all of our legal filings and our communications, please visit rebeltrial.com. Free speech itself and due process depends on it.